Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, pimps and hoes. You've missed the first two biggest events of your life, and that's the birth of your mom and your daddy. Don't you dare miss the third biggest events, the hottest shoot interview out there today. Brickhouse Brown tells it all. And you can get this on highspots.com. But now this is the first edition of my new computer show, and you can check it out on highspots.tv. Now, the thing that's on my mind now is I wrestled in Philadelphia, Mississippi here a month ago. The first thing people come up to me and go, Brickhouse, why aren't you in the WWE? Well, I'm going to tell you why I'm not in the WWE. Years ago in 1988, 89, and 90, I was competing in the WWE. And I was doing pretty good for myself. I was green and I had been in the business maybe seven years at the tops. And then... One day in Cincinnati, Ohio, I was in the elevator. The vice president at that point in time, Pat Patterson, was in the elevator with me. And he goes, Brick House, you used to be a male stripper in college, didn't you? And I go, yes, because they did background checks back then. I said, yes. He said, well, we got a new gimmick for you we've been thinking about. We're going to have you come out like a Mr. Chippendale dancer. You come out, you do your dance, and then you do your tearaway deal and your wrestling tights is on, none of that. You think you can pull that off? And I go, why, hell yeah, definitely. I can most certainly pull that off. He said, well, good. He said, there's only one problem. I go, what's that, Pat, Mr. Patterson? He goes, well, you have to come over to my house for some dress rehearsal. Then he grabbed my ass, and then he said, of course, some undress rehearsal, too. Now, that's the vice president of the WWE back then, the WWF. Now, I couldn't whoop his ass because, hell, how was I going to be mad at him for admiring all of this? But the thing about it is, when that elevator door opened, you would have thought I had jets shooting out of my ass getting the hell out of that elevator. But it disturbed me so much, I called up Hulk Hogan. I called up Randy Savage. I called up Pedro Morales. I called up Big Cat Ernie Ladd, who was responsible for me having a job in the first place in the WWE. And they all told me the same thing. They said, Brick, that's your call. You're going to have to deal with that. Well, me being the green wrestler that I was at the time, I didn't know what else to do. So I thought about it. I said, hmm. So I called up Linda McMahon. I gave some half ass excuse that I was getting ready to go back to Auburn to get another degree just to get out of my contract. And this is a true story. I was getting ready to sign for 200000 a year. But that disturbed me so bad that I decided to quit the WWE. And Miss McMahon said to me on the phone, she said, Brickhouse, you did a good job for us, and you would be welcome back here to the WWE at any time. And good luck. And uh, years later, of course, when I tried to reapply myself to go back, the suits and ties that are running the Federation now make it difficult for people like me to ever work for the WWE again. Mainly because you got somebody like Johnny Ace making the career decisions. Johnny Ace can make or break a career. As long as Johnny Ace is running that part of the department of the WWE, I'll never have a career to WWE. Johnny Ace, how did he get his spot in the WWE? Let's see, what did he ever accomplish? The main thing to claim to his fame was, oh yeah, he was the flag bearer for the freaking sheep hurdles. Big deal. What I want to know is, wonder how much he had to bear. I wonder where that flag got stuck so many times. Because trust me, I know Butcher Luke. Can you say, how you doing? That's Butcher Luke, the sheep herders. So that's Johnny Ace's main claim to fame. And he thinks I'm an idiot anyway. You know why I say that? Because I was up for the referee deal. Triple H saw me at a show and said, Brickhouse, you know what would be great? If you did the referee deal, we need a referee now. You can help the young guys in the ring when they stall and get lost. You can tell them what to do and make suggestions. He said, and you can ride that for seven, eight years or longer and still make a living. And I thought about it. I said, well, you know what? That's a good deal. I've held titles. I've been an ass kicker. Got nothing left to prove in this business. So I went to Nashville and I did the tryout. I did eight matches, and I know I nailed it to the wall. I know I nailed it. So after the whole night was over, Johnny Ace comes up to me and says, how do you think I do? I said, well, I think I nailed it. What is it not to do? You get out for the false finishes, you count, they kick out, and then when the finish come up, you count one, two, three. What was it? I stayed out of the way of the hard camera, did the horseshoe, did everything I was supposed to do. And he goes, well, you need to go back and get some more referee experiences. And I said, you must think I'm a blooming fucking idiot. 
He said, no, why? I said, because you'd have to be a blooming fucking idiot if you've been in the business 28 fucking years and you can't referee. So you must think I'm an idiot. So, <clears throat> but what had happened was people like Steve Lombardi, Downtown Bruno, Jerry Lawler, they all got in his ear. And those are the people that play a hate. Can you say Jerry Lawler, Downtown Bruno, Steve Lombardi? They all sip on haterade when it come to Brick House. Sipping on that haterade ain't gonna get you nowhere because I'm still Brick House Brown. Even if I'm not working for the WWE, I'm still kicking somebody's ass, taking somebody's name all over the country, and then working out with the WWE is not gonna happen for me. Big freaking deal. I'm proud of my career, so you can take that to the bank. Now, I'm going to tell you something else. One last thing about the WWE. The thing is, back in that time, WWE is a fantastic place to work for. I wish that every guy that was ever a professional wrestler could experience the wonder of working in the WWE. They make you feel like a professional. But on the other hand, when it's time for you to break ship or whatever, they play with your lives. They play with your career. And you have to be a strong, have a strong constitution up here if you're going to survive with the WWE. Just take, for instance, which we'll be talking to him on some later shows, The Boogeyman. Well, now I have to say the artist, the wrestler formerly known as The Boogeyman. I'm going to be talking to him on some later shows, but right now I will tell you about the raw deal that he got on some later shows. I'm not going to go into that now, but there's a whole bunch of things that I can tell you about. Some people that played the game in the WWE and a lot of the people that didn't play the game. Those that played the game became millionaires. Those that didn't play the game dug lint out, my pocket, out of their pockets. And I got to say this one thing in closing. Years later, when I was digging lint out my pocket, I'm not going to lie to y'all fans out there. I thought hard and long about, well, I wonder if I can get Pat Patterson number again to see if he still might be interested in that. I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> I thought about it plenty of times. But the bottom line is, I didn't do it. I think I'd rather flip a burger in McDonald's than to go that route and try to make money in the wrestling business. So there you have it. Yes, I said it. Tune in and keep it every week. That's right. On Highspot.tv and see what I got to say because I'm going to tell you something. You're not going to believe it. But yeah, I said it and I meant every word of it. Here's Brickhouse signing off. Check y'all out later. Peace.